Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, I have an Adobe XD hover effect design tutorial for you guys. We're going to be creating this card that has a drop shadow in the background that animates in along with this honey dripping effect in the corner. Now this effect is very specific for this tutorial and you may not need a honey dripping effect on all of your other designs, but through this tutorial, I hope to break down the hover effect and show you guys the possibilities with it so you can take it and make a number of different hover effects inside of Adobe XD. Before we take a look at the project file, I just want to let you guys know there's a channel update at the end of this video talking about my new upload schedule. In short, I'm going to be uploading consistently every Tuesday and Thursday starting this week and throughout 2020. Again, more information at the end of the video, but let's go ahead and get started with today's tutorial. A link for this project file will be down in the description like all of my tutorials. It will set you up for the starting point for this tutorial. I have a normal web artboard 1920 by 1080 here with these four guides shaping out the square for our card. Over here on the left, I have the colors, character styles, and components that you need to make this exact design in the tutorial. So this is the project file. Link will be down in the description. Let's go ahead and get started with our design. I'm just going to zoom in here to the center of the artboard. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and just drag out a rectangle to fill in these guides. That size is 536 pixels by 402. For now, I'm just going to leave the border and the fill at white. We're going to need a total of three texts for this. We're going to have a heading text, a body text, and a button. So let's go ahead and add that content now. So I'm just going to put in raw honey for my H1. And I'm going to set this to Helvetica Nue 48 point font. And this is medium weight. Underneath that, I'm going to drag out a text area. And for now, I'm just going to put in a bit of junk text. So here in this text area, I'm just going to paste in a bit of text about bees and honey. And we're going to set that to Helvetica Nue 17 point font. And this is medium weight. Also, the colors are with the character styles I'm using, but I also have them up here. If you want to set them manually, you can see them all listed here. And below that, we're going to have a button. And so we're just going to say learn more. And I'm going to set that again to 17 point font. And this time it's going to be bold. And I'm setting it to this darker yellow color here. And now let's go ahead and line all these together. So I'm just going to grab all of them and select a line to the left. We're going to place these 69 pixels from the left hand side of the card. And then I'm going to shape our text area to give us exactly the same on the other side, just like that. For the title, we're going to put that 104 pixels from the top. And then we'll drop this 15 below. And then I'm going to drag this text area until the text just shows. And below that, we'll put the button 30 pixels below. Also to mention my line height here is already increased to 28. You might need to set that manually. And that is the text for our card. Next we have two icons that we're gonna be using. One is a honeycomb icon. I just used the polygon tool here in Adobe XD, created a polygon, copied it a few times, and then created this honeycomb shape. So I'm gonna put this aligning to the left with the rest of our text. And we'll put that 15 pixels above our H1 heading here. Lastly, I have one more icon. It is the arrow right icon. I'm just going to drag that in. And we'll put about 10 pixels in between the learn more and that. And I'm gonna drop that down just so that line kind of lines up with the line here in the E and just looks good with the rest of the text. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our drop shadow. And we're not gonna do that by the typical means of grabbing the rectangle and just checking shadow. Um, I tried this with this method and the shadow just kind of snapped on. It didn't auto animate in. I don't think that is added. So we're going to cheat the system and use an actual shape that we've blurred to look like a shadow so that we can actually get the desired effect when we hover over the card. So I've already added another color in here. Here's the color code. It will be included in the project file as well. And that's going to be what we're gonna set our rectangle to. So I'm going to grab this rectangle here and I'm going to make a copy with command C and command V to paste a rectangle on top. So I'm just going to drag this over here to the left for now so we can see it. And we're going to fill this with this bluish gray color and remove the border. 
To create a blur on this, we're gonna to go to the background blur drop down and select object blur. And I'm going to set this to about 25, 26%, just like that. And I'm going to drag the opacity down on this to 12%. So we have this drop shadow. Then I'm just going to center this up with our card. Command, shift, left square and bracket key will send that all the way to the back. And now I'm going to hold shift and hit my left arrow key twice and that will move it 20 pixels to the left, so 10, 20. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, but in the down direction, so 10, 20. So we've just shifted that, as you can see here, down to the left a little bit, just so we don't have that drop shadow so noticeable up here in the top. It adds more of a subtle effect to the drop shadow. So now that we have that, I'm going to remove the border from our white rectangle here. And I'm going to hit Command semicolon to turn off our guides, and you can see what our card actually looks like right now if it were to be hovered over. So from this point, I'm actually gonna do something I usually never do, and I'm going to name my layers because this might get a little complex if we don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the layers panel, and I'm going to grab all three of the texts and hit Command G to create a group, and I'm going to double click on that and name this text. Next, I need to make sure that I'm selecting the white rectangle that is the background of our card, and I'm going to call this card background. So then that makes rectangle two here, the drop shadow. So I'm going to call it drop shadow. And just to make this a little simpler, I'm just gonna grab both of these icons and drag them into that text grouping. And I'll just edit that text and call that text and icons. That way we have all of our elements in that grouping. Then we have our card background and our drop shadow. From here, we can convert this into a component. So to do that, I'm going to grab all of these and hit command G to make it one group and I'll just call this card. From here, I'm gonna go in the top right hand of the properties inspector and select make component by clicking the plus icon. So this is going to be the default state of our card. And then I'm gonna hit the plus icon to add a hover state, which is built in through the new feature. So we can just click that and we'll just leave that as hover state for the title of that. So what we need to do is have this as the hover state when the drop shadow is here and then we need to turn it off in the default state. So I'm going to go over here and double click on this component that we've just now created, go to drop shadow, and I'm just gonna drag the opacity to 0%. Now when we switch to hover state, since we edited the original state, it's automatically applied here, so we just have to turn the opacity back on. So I'm gonna go into the component, grab the drop shadow, and just drag that back up to 12% opacity. So now we can set this card back to the default state and we can hit the play button up here, which is for the desktop preview. And now if I am to hover over this card, you'll notice that we have a drop shadow up here. So now what we want to do is edit the timing of that effect. So I'm going to select our component, go to the prototype tab and you'll notice we have this wire set up. This is the wire for the hover effect, as you can see right here, hover, auto animate. And we want to set this to ease out and I'm gonna bump up the time to a one second duration. So now if I am to hit the live preview, when I hover over this, you'll notice that it's a slower transition and it's nice and subtle. So now we have a nice hover effect started, but we wanna take this a little bit further and we wanna add that nice honey dripping here in the corner. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I've swapped back over to my assets panel to design the honey dripping effect. I'm going to hit command semicolon again on my keyboard to show our original guides. And now we're going to take the pencil and draw our honey effect here in the top right. So the goal while we're drawing this is to make this look exactly how we want it when it is done animating. So we're gonna pretend like this is the end state of the effect. So I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard for the pen tool. So I'm gonna start with a point just up here and create another point right here above kind of the O. And I'm gonna come in to one point, go up, down again, another point, and then connect. So we're making this kind of shape. From here, we're going to round all these by double clicking on the point. So I'm gonna drag this point a ways down and this is going to be our drip effect. I'm gonna double click to round this one and this one as well. So from here, I'm going to drag the handles till I get the desired effect that I'm looking for. 
So this is my final path that I'm going to go with. I have kind of a nice drip here on the side and then a larger dripping effect over here on the right. So I just double clicked to edit those anchors into rounded points. Some I left a straight point like up here at the top, uh, but all that matters is what is going to be visible on the card. So we're going to fill this with our lighter shade of yellow, and this is FCD615 is the color code. So we're gonna make sure we turn that fill on and turn off the border. So what we need to do is actually add this into a mask. So I'm going to actually create another rectangle the same size as our card. I'm going to remove the border, and then with that selected, I'm gonna hold shift and grab that dripping effect. So now I have that rectangle we just created and that dripping effect selected. Command Shift M on the keyboard to mask that shape, or you can go up to Object and Mask with Shape in the top left. So that's going to give us the effect cropped onto our card. So let's head over to the Layers panel. So now you'll see we have this masked group. I'm gonna click on that and name that Honey Effect. So with the Honey Effect selected, I'm going to copy it with Command C. I'm actually just going to delete it. And then we're gonna go and double click inside of our card here. And then I'm going to hit Command V to paste that in. You can't actually drag it in via the layers panel, so we have to paste it in. So we want this on the top of everything else. And now it is a part of our component, as you can see. So now that this is all grouped into one component, we can finish off this effect. So if I select the component, you'll notice that we are in the default state. And in the hover state, we want it to be here, but in the default state, we don't want it to be visible. So how we're gonna have to do this is we're gonna have to adjust our anchor points here in the default state, and then readjust them back in the hover state to apply this effect. So here in the default state, I'm going to double click, then I'm going to select my honey effect and grab the actual path. So with this path selected, the first thing I'm going to do is drag this up off of our visible area. So we're just gonna drag that out of our grouping, just like that. And I'm going to double click on this shape to edit the points, and I'm just going to drag them straight up. Just like that. And now one final thing that I'm gonna do is, if you notice when something drips down, it starts smaller here in the drip and gets larger. So like that. So I'm going to just shrink this down just a little bit so as it animates in, it gets larger on the way down. Also by dragging this right hand side of the drip way up higher, this is going to come down first and then this will come down after it, adding kind of that wave effect. So that is our default state set. So let's go into the hover state. All we have to do is get that path back the way we want it. So I'm going to drag it back down. I'm going to double click so that I can see my points and I'm just going to drag them down into a spot that I'm happy with. And on this, I'm going to increase the width just a little bit. and get everything the way I want it to look in my final effect. So once that's done, we can set this back to the default state. You'll notice the honey drop disappears, our shadow is gone, and we can go and hit the live preview. And when we hover over the card, you'll see the honey effect happen. A nice little drop in from the side as the drop shadow comes in. So this is just one of many things you can do with the hover effect inside of Adobe XD. If you guys have any suggestions for future tutorials or have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments below. During the first hour or two the video is live, I like to answer the comments as many as I can, and then I'll come back at a later date and try to get to the rest of them. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you did. So before I sign off on this video, I just wanted to give you guys a quick channel update. Like I said in the intro, I'm now going to be consistently uploading every Tuesday and Thursday. So I've been thinking about switching to a full-time schedule like this for a while, um, but along with that comes some considerations, some planning, and some life changes. So I've made the necessary steps uh, to pursue the things that I'm passionate about, and I'm very happy and excited to do so. 
Um, but also with that, I had to have the right opportunity to be able to do that. And a lot of that opportunity comes from this YouTube channel and your support. So I thank each one of you for your roles in that. Overall, I'm just really excited for this next step and I just wanna let you guys know that the consistent videos are coming. They're here every Tuesday and Thursday and I hope you guys are looking forward to new content that I'm now gonna have the time to put out, new series that I have planned. Uh, so exciting stuff and I just wanted to share that with you guys real quick before I ended this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video and if you stayed for the channel update, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and have that notification bell on for all those new videos coming soon and as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.